There's no blame on those people who have come to believe and have been doing good deeds on what they had eaten or drunk before. Because when these ayats were revealed, people, you know, became very much thoughtful. What will happen to us? If it is Rijsun Minamali Shaitan, we have been taking it, taking it, taking it. Maybe some, someone of, among them had accepted Islam at the age of 60. He was consuming alcohol and wine throughout his life. Because in Arabian civilization also, this wine was just as a part of their food as it is in the West. They were accustomed to it. Now they thought that, you know, each and every cell of my body must have wine in it. <laughs> I have been consuming so much wine. What will happen to me? It means I am, whole of my body is now rich. That was their concern. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alleviating their concern. No, no, no. Till such time that we declared finally that it is forbidden, whatever you have drunk or eaten, there is no blame on you. So that is the subject of the ayah. But now, what is coming next is the most important profound. This is the ayah which gives you three stations in Islam. Legal Iman, Real Iman, and Ihsan. The same three questions were asked to the Prophet by Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam and you find it in the hadith of Jibreel. The Ummu Sunnah Akhbirni anil Islam Akhbirni anil Iman Akhbirni anil Ihsan Legal Iman is Islam. We are Muslims, we are legally women. Real Iman is the conviction that you really have it. May Allah give us all that conviction, that real belief, that yaqeen, ilm al yaqeen at least. And then highest level is ihsan. What is ihsan? An ta'bud Allah ka anna ka tarahu, fa illam takun tarahu fa innahu yaraak. That your belief in Allah's existence and presence reaches that level of conviction as if you are seeing him with your own eyes. And if not that, you must have a feeling that he is seeing you and you are in his presence. But you know this hadith has been narrated by so many sahaba. Hazrat Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abu Huraira. And there are slight differences in wordings. So let me give you three things here. Antabud Allah ka'anna katarahu. أن تخشى الله كأنك تراه أن تعمل لله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك You worship Allah as if you see him You fear Allah as if you see him You work for Allah You strive for Allah With such an intensity As if you are seeing This is Ihsan Now we find there are three stations Three levels But the driving force what will take me from the first to the second? Taqwa. What will take me from the second to the third? Taqwa. How beautifully this taqwa is being repeated here. Three Three levels, you have to climb step by step. But you need some effort to go higher up. And you know the pushing force, the motivating force, the driving force is taqwa. Here I differ from Arna Madhudi. He has written a very good book, a very small pamphlet, but very profound. He has taken them to be four stations. Iman, taqwa, 
اسلام احسان اکارڈنگ ٹو دس آیا تقوا از ناٹ اے اسٹیشن تقوا از ناٹ اے لیول اٹس دی کنٹینولی ڈرائیونگ فورس اسٹیشن آر اونلی تھری اسلام اور لیگل ایمان دین ریئل ایمان دین احسان بٹ اینی ہاؤ دی سبجیکٹ میٹر آف دیٹ بک لیٹ از ویری گڈ ویری پرفاؤنڈ بٹ ہیئر یو نو اٹس بیٹر بیکاز تقوا از ریپیٹڈ تھری ٹائمز ہیئر it is the driving force and second point with this ayah clears very much is the difference of opinion between imam abu hanifa and imam bukhari rahimahullah imam abu hanifa says that iman and amal salih they are two separate entities imam bukhari says no iman and amal salih are one organic whole Both are hundred percent correct. How? Apparently, these statements are self-contradictory. But one is speaking about the legal iman. Imam Abu Imam Abu Hanifa is a jurist. He looks to the legal sides of the matter. At the legal level, iman is separate. Amal is separate. Amal is not part of iman. But at the real level. they amalgamate with each other they become an organic whole this is what you find here at the legal level izamat taqwa wa amanu wa amilu salihat summa taqwa wa amanu now the amal salih is not mentioned here again because now it has become an integral part of iman they have mixed with each other as an organic whole inseparable لا ينفك والله يحب المحسنين and whosoever reaches that level of ihsan well he becomes the beloved of allah may allah give us at least the courage to make a firm resolve to rise to that level if you have the intention allah will open ways for you if we have only the progress in business in profession having more and more property and so on well allah will give you but if now you change your field of ambitions i want to go this way i am a legal muslim and it is also by the grace of allah that i was born to muslim parents but i won't be contented with this station i'll go to real iman and then not only to real iman but to ihsan may allah bless us